This PC right here is one of the weirdest problems I have seen yet. It simply won't install Windows. And you get into the BIOS, you can update the BIOS, you can lock in your memory speeds, and everything seems to be working okay on the surface. But when you try to install Windows, you just keep getting met with an error. So if you guys have had this problem in the past, or you have this problem in the future, let's diagnose what it could be. Today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their Z590 Phantom Gaming Velocity Motherboard featuring PCA 4.0 M.2 support as well as a 3 centimeter personalized MOS fan covering the 14 phase BRM for overclocking. And lastly, if you're a gamer, you've got dedicated lightning game ports which allow you to separate the latency of your keyboard and mouse on separate controllers. Links in the description below to find out more. So we've now removed the motherboard and one thing I like to do is take everything back to basics when I come into a very weird problem, especially if you're looking on Google and search engines and you just can't find the answer to your problem. So for instance, you look through all these different results and you've tried all those different methods and the problem still exists, then it's most likely going to be a hardware problem. And so what we're doing right here is we've taken things back to basics. I'm testing out the power supply in this rig first to make sure that it's okay. And it's giving me out a solid signal to say that the power supply works. All the three lights are lighting up on its different voltage rails, which means that this power supply is not the problem of Windows not installing and not booting on this PC. So we're onto the next problem now, and that is to check out the motherboard. So we've still got our problem here. It still exists. And this is the next phase where we've tested the power supply, We've now changed over RAM and we've tried different RAM and this problem is still coming up. And this is what happens. It just doesn't do anything. It'll just go fault, uh, page, non-paged area. It'll just keep bringing up this error every time we either try to install Windows or we try to uh, even boot off another drive with Windows on it. And what I'm thinking now is because we've changed the motherboard over and we've changed the RAM over, I'm actually starting to think it could be this Ryzen 7 1700X. Now I have in the past come into one faulty AMD CPU that was still working and it made it to Windows, but it had a weird problem where the graphics card would not install on the direct PCIe lane from the CPU. And if you guys haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up here, but this time around, it looks like there's a much different problem that exists with this CPU. So what I'm gonna do now is change over the CPU and then see if we can get our Windows to install. So after a few hours of testing and diagnosing, we finally found what the problem was in this particular build. And it's gonna be such a weird fix this time around. We ended up trying a Ryzen 5 1600X and that worked on a different motherboard, so everything worked. And then we nailed it down to the CPU, the Ryzen 7 1700X. And that was essentially one of the cores must have been faulty because when we dropped the in the BIOS, you can actually do down core control on AMD Ryzen motherboards, at least some of them. And we dropped it down to two plus two, which basically turns this eight core into a four core. So this CPU now becomes essentially a Ryzen 5 1500X. And sure enough, this PC was now booting into Windows, ready to install Windows. And then we got the PC to work with a fresh install of Windows and everything is now absolutely fine so there it is with our pc it is all fixed <laughs> and we've turned a eight core into a four core and i still cannot get over that the fact that this is probably the most bizarre problem i have seen in terms of fixing faulty pc parts but it's not really a fix because we've turned an eight core into a four core i mean would you call that a fix let us know in the comments but it still works it'll still play games four cores eight threads but now it's time to help you guys out there in the audience who are thinking 
what if I come into a problem, whether it's, especially if it's your first PC. So I'm gonna give you guys some advice. If you're building a new PC for the first time, try to get most of your parts from the same place. Even if it costs you a few dollars more, if you buy all your parts from one place and something does go wrong, you get a fault like we had in today's video where Windows just wouldn't install, then you can take it to the place and say, hey, this PC, I think it's faulty, can you fix it? And they'll probably find there'll be a faulty part in it and they can replace it for you. But now we're onto the used side of things. The used side is where if you're buying those used parts, always make sure they work or if you're buying them online, make sure you've got some kind of guarantee where you can get your money back if those parts don't work. So they're the basic tips if it's your first time building a PC, whether it's new or it's used. But if you are building PCs now from various different places and you've got various different parts coming in, then the best way to diagnose these problems is just simply trial and error. It's a process of elimination and that's what we did here today. Now I started off and I'll list for you guys right now my list of most probable to least probable when it comes to diagnosing faulty hardware. And the first thing is, of course, RAM. I find DDR3 or DDR4, it is, and soon to be DDR5, this stuff is the most common fault in a PC. And now this is easy to diagnose even if you've just got one PC. That is if you've got two sticks of memory. So the easiest way to check is to take out one stick of memory and then turn the PC on, see if it works fine. If it doesn't, then you can try the other stick of memory and that should give you an indication if it is the memory. Then the next part that is the most common in terms of faulty hardware that I come into, and this one's actually very unfortunate because it is a big pain, and that is the motherboard. If you have a faulty motherboard, it can do all sorts of errors. It can do throw out all sorts of issues. Unlike RAM, which RAM usually if it's faulty, the PC actually won't start or it won't run for that long. It'll even freeze in the BIOS. But motherboard, it can just spit out so many different errors that I'm not gonna list them all in today's video. But, but that said, this one usually is one of the most difficult to diagnose because you usually have to have the same architecture of motherboard on hand Say for instance, Ryzen AM4, you've got to have another Ryzen AM4 motherboard on hand to see if that motherboard is faulty. Though the next part after that I find is the SSD or even a hard drive. I've had hard drives and SSDs that have actually stopped the PC from booting past the BIOS screen. That is once it gets to initializing the SATA disk set, it'll actually freeze because that hard drive just simply doesn't work or the SSD doesn't work. However, you can also come into faulty SSDs that don't work either, and they'll be problematic when you try to install Windows. So that would be the third most probable part that I come into when I'm building PCs, followed by this next one, and that is the graphics card. Now, if you're into used PC parts, this one will probably be more common than the SSD or the hard drive, but if you're into buying new parts, this one will actually be quite rare. But an easy way to diagnose this is to actually just have a really cheap old graphics card on hand. And you can usually pick these out of old office PCs or even throwaway PCs. And they, for me, for instance, they cost nothing. People, they're just everywhere when I go use PC parts hunting. So it's always good to have a spare, real cheap graphics card. Even if you're new to PC gaming, it's always good to have just a spare GPU on hand just to test things out. But the next problem and the second most rarest problem is the power supply. This one can be really weird where in the past I've detailed videos where I've actually come into a faulty power supply and it was stopping the build from installing Windows. And it wasn't until I changed the power supply out that I realized, wow, that was stopping the PC from installing Windows. It's a very bizarre problem, just like today's video, but an easy way to test if a power supply is faulty is to get a power supply tester, or of course, have a spare power supply on hand that you know works. In today's video, I showed you guys a power supply tester, all the lights were lighting up, power good meter was showing that the power supply was fine, so we were good to go. We didn't have to change that part out because we knew it was fine. Though, last problem, CPU. And that was today's problem. This one is extremely rare. And unfortunately for the person that came around needing their PC fixed today, 
this was the unfortunate event that happened on a CPU that's out of warranty. Because the 1700X is now over three years old, it only had a three year warranty when it was purchased. So that means they are out of luck, but they did buy this CPU also off the secondhand market. And the person that sold it to them said it was all tested and working fine. So unfortunately, this is one of those problems that can occur in the used market scene where people say the parts work and they don't work. So I mean, shame on the person that did hose down this poor guy that came around here today wanting help with his PC. It's a really unfortunate set of events, but that is what happens if you don't check the parts out when you get them and you don't have a recourse to get your money back because there are people out there that will try to scam you. And I actually, this year, 2021, I have seen the most amount of scams that I've ever seen being into building PCs. I try to warn people about it as much as I can, but it just seems like it's getting worse and worse. So do be very cautious when buying stuff at this point in time when it comes to PC tech. Though if you do come into a faulty CPU, two things usually happen. Either the whole PC just doesn't boot up at all, and that one's easy because you then once you change out the CPU, you know straight away that it's the CPU that's faulty, or it just gives you this really rare and bizarre behavior like we had today. And actually the weird behavior is so similar in ways to some of the other problems, especially like the power, faulty power supply, for instance, that it's hard to tell which one it is unless you do that process of elimination. So ultimately it's one of those catch 22s when it comes to fixing PCs up, you do need those spare parts on hand. And unfortunately, if you don't have them on hand, it does make the job pretty difficult because in ways I feel like a lot of people out there will be looking for solutions for their problems and they'll just be like literally just grasping at straws, trying to pick out which one <laughs> might fix their problem. And that in itself can waste a lot of time. And I know that a lot of, for instance, where I live, a lot of local techs here will charge a lot of money to the point where it's almost cheaper to go out and buy a whole nother PC than it is to get your PC fixed. That said, if you are into trial and error and process of elimination and you can get replacement parts for pretty cheap, then you can do that and find the solution yourself. And in the end, you will learn a lot in the process. So hopefully this video has helped you guys in identifying problems that can cause your system not to start or install Windows. And with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button for us. And also we got the question of the day here, which actually relates perfectly to faulty PC parts. And it comes from Anton Fetzer. And they asked, my Radeon 6870 works perfectly fine in BIOS and without drivers. But as soon as I install any driver, my PC just freezes. Is there anything I could do? So most likely the graphics card is faulty since it is a 6870 and it is quite old. But I have, and this is a really bizarre problem as well, I have come into a CPU that's had a faulty PCIe device and that's caused the graphics card not to work. But I would say just if you can grab that graphics card, try it on another system. If you've got a friend with a gaming PC, just say, hey, can I quickly take out your graphics card? Put this one in and try and get it to boot into Windows and install the drivers. If the exact same thing happens on another PC, then you 100% know that the graphics card is faulty. And the unfortunate news with the 6870 is if it doesn't install the drivers and the whole PC just gives you a black screen and freezes when you're trying to install those graphics card drivers on this GPU, then usually most of the time it's just a GPU that's got a faulty piece of hardware on it and it requires a lot of skill, time, and even money to fix that GPU. So probably not the answer you wanted to hear, but if you come to Tech Yes City, I'm always just gonna tell it how it is, and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you've stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, sub button's down there, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.